Before ending this lecture, we need to uh, discuss an important topic which is called shortcuts. So, in the above syntax, we needed to write a large number of parentheses over and over again. And each time we apply uh, a binary operator, we introducing parentheses and it becomes unreadable after some number of operations and uh, and often it feels that's not necessary okay so can we somehow avoid writing so many uh, some uh, parentheses by using something called precedence order okay. so let's look at an example in this example you have uh, first you have a conjunction here then this is a disjunction and then you have an implication so for each one of them you introduced a parenthesis and you have let's say six parentheses one. It's very clear we can out drop outermost parenthesis very easily without any confusion, so that's okay. So this is allowed. So now if we want to drop these parentheses, it will create a confusion that the, 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 the conjunct the conjunction is first applied or the implication first applied. If you do that, you can maybe think it like this the parenthesis structure. So you need to somehow say that which symbol gets applied first. Okay? This is called precedence order. When you have a confusion, which symbol gets the priority? So if and and or gets precedence, okay, this gets better precedence than the implication during parsing. We do not need the rest of the parentheses. It becomes very clear. As soon as you see oh conjunction and implication side by side, therefore I will apply the conjunction first. And again, here is the conjunction, then you have a conjunction first. Here is a precedence order, which is, be, which is generally being considered for the proposition logic. So, disjunction, conjunction, and XOR at the same level, they have mutually with each other, they don't have a preference, but they are preferred better than equivalence and implication and negation trumps everybody. If the negation is there, then it first applied, then everything else is okay. okay. So if you have precedence order, then how do you go about parsing a formula? Formula parsing becomes slightly involved. So what do we do? We introduce all the missing parentheses back in and then use the normal parsing. The trick is pretty simple. Okay. So you look at the formula. And you find the sequence of uh, formulas in which you have a formula, a binary symbol, then the formula, then binary symbol, and goes on. And now your question is, which binary symbol you should put a parenthesis around first? Okay. And what do you do? You find a binary symbol, let's say OI, such that its neighbors, if they exist, I mean, you, if you're sitting in one, one corner, then maybe the left neighbor doesn't exist. But let's suppose any, both the neighbor exist. Okay, so your neighbors have lower precedence, then the OI has a higher precedence, and you can put parentheses and make it a one formula. Basically. So what do you do? Since OI has a higher precedence compared to its uh, its neighbors, now this can we can say safely say that they can put a parenthesis around it. Okay, so this chain of confusing sequence of uh, uh, binary operators is reduced by one. Now the chain is slightly shorter. Now you go and keep applying again and again and then finally you have enough parentheses and then now you can pass. Insights of FIs may have more ambiguity. So once you apply this, this, this sequence and you finish, then you may have a recursively more formulas inside these FIs where you have more chains, then you can go and apply again recursively. So let's look at an example. So here earlier if we try to remove the parentheses. Now let's try to add the parentheses back. So in this chain you can see that you have three uh, binary operators and you can see that this guy has higher precedence compared to its neighbor and doesn't have a left neighbor. Okay? So that means you can apply this parenthesis first. Okay. Then you go about saying now chain is shorter. Now you have a two uh, binary operator setting next to each other. So you need to see, okay, well, is there one which has a higher precedence, which is this guy? That's okay, I'm going to put a parenthesis around it and we put them together. Now you have a single operator, so you can say, okay, well, I'm going to put a 
expand this around. It's very fairly simple. Okay, so now you get a get a formula which belongs to proper syntax. So you can easily see which of these formulas can be unambiguously passed. Okay, for example, here you have uh, or and binary implication, and then you have a, a conjunction. So you can easily see you can pass this. There's no confusion. You can always come and pass this. Okay. Look at the looks one. You have a or and and next to each other. Remember that in our precedence order, there is no preference between and and on. So then you cannot really parse this thing. We need parentheses. You put the, somebody who dropped the parentheses here did the wrong thing. It's not allowed. Okay. If you have a repeated occurrence of or, okay, then again you have a problem because now how do where should I put parentheses? Parentheses here or here? We have no idea, and this is also not allowed. Okay? So how do we go about handling these situations? The second situation uh, cannot be handled. Okay? So this is very clear. Okay? So this this needs parenthesis, but this we may be able to handle, and and let's see how how do we do that. Let's look at one more situation when the sim same uh, binary symbol repeats. In this case, you may think that it's okay if I don't know which order we should apply our parenthesis, but in this case, it won't mean the same thing, and therefore, you need to know how to apply parenthesis. So, what do we do in this case is that we call something called associativity preference. Uh, may further reduce the need of parenthesis. What do you do? You you basically say if you have a same binary operator occurring repeatedly. You'd say that leftmost will get the first parenthesis or rightmost. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, whatever. You just choose a convention and stick to it. And most often, people choose right uh, associativity. So basically, in this case, it will be interpreted as this guy. So if we have right associativity, so let's see. Uh, how do we apply in a formula? So in this we have a P implies Q implies R. So what you can say that I will first Q and R together and then we put this whole formula together. We have a proper parsable formula. Now once you do that you need to modify our, our algorithm earlier when you introduce this uh, parenthesis back. So go and try to figure out how the algorithm will change to support SSC. We need a few more notation with something called substitution. Uh, substitution is basically a simple idea that if you have a variable occurring somewhere and you can replace with another formula then it gives you some notation. So this is the notation. You can write a formula f which has variables p1 and pk may be occurring or may or may not be occurring. And then you can, you can do wherever p1 occurs you can replace it by g1 and wherever pk occurs to replace by g okay and this is called simultaneous substitution basically multiple substitutions are happening at the same time okay let's look at an example here is the formula and i want to do substitution uh this guy uh, wherever p occurs so you find p and put this okay so you get this substitution note that a simultaneous substitution is not a equal to sequential substitution Basically, here I am trying to apply these two substitutions together. And if you do the same thing one after another, first apply this substitution, and then you try to apply this substitution, it will not work. It will produce the different outcome. Yeah? So uh, try to work it out and see uh, what is the difference and in what situations those differences matter and when actually it doesn't matter. Okay, what conditions on substitution you can write down such that this uh, this uh, simultaneous substitution and sequential substitutions are same. Sometimes a substitution is also uh, written down a slightly differently for convenience of notation. Instead of uh, writing a formula f, we write formula f with some bunch of variables which are considered important variables in the formula. Formula may have more variables, but uh, for 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 the current context where you're talking about that formula, that some specific variables are relevant. So you just uh, list these uh, variables and f of g1 to gn is the this 
substitution basically wherever p1 occurs we need to write g1 wherever pk occurs we need to not write gk for example you have formula fpq uh, which is equal to not p x or q and if you write uh, f of r or q uh, comma true it gets replaced by this okay so this is a simple notation and please uh, just pay attention to it in future when you see it, it should not be confused